So folks, our choice now is to deliberate <coughs> now, or if you all want to drink your lilac scented water <laughs> and tastes like lilac. Uh, mm -hmm. um, we could either pause, end this meeting and reconvene at some point if we want to take time to think about it, or we can deliberate now and see if we're ready to make a decision. And the decision needs to be made in a public meeting. And the decision needs to be made in a public meeting. Mm -hmm. Are there timeline consequences for making this decision sooner rather than later? Uh, it'd be good to know. <laughs> and there were CPAC people on the committee? Yes, there were. Two. Can we get their opinions? Mm -hmm. If, you want if you're willing. Yeah. I mean, it all has to be on the record, yeah. so to speak. But they're not, you're not obliged to speak. Not obliged. This is the school committee's decision. So. I think we have two very well qualified applicants for this position. Um, I do think that there is some difference in philosophy that is apparent through the manner in which they answer the questions. and the directions that they took were very similar questions. And I think that the committee has to decide which direction special education is going to take based on those. That was well said. So what would you see of those two different categories? Um, there are the one that we're most familiar with um, is very analytical and very performance driven. And the new applicant has a much more holistic philosophy towards and that might be reflected in terms of the degree to which she is new to the process and has fresh education. I don't know how the accreditation process works, so I don't know what's new and what's not, mm -hmm. but there is that dichotomy there between the two. Sure. I would ask school committee two to consider um, looking at, and I know you didn't get to meet, I don't think any, well, I don't know if you met the coordinator that was just hired, but thinking about the coordinator um, in terms of her package versus working with what you know based off of these two people who might have a good working relationship as well, take that into consideration too. But you I might know, we don't know. You don't know we don't, none of us were a part of that. Yeah. Um, what do folks want to do? Do you want to pause and think for a while and see, or do you want to keep talking? I I have a bias towards action. I like to okay. I like to move forward. Um, you know, we have no more. This is all the data right. we're going to have. That's at right. This point, Absolutely. So. May I ask? Uh, were there references checked? May I they ask were a provided. question? They were provided in, in the package. package. There were some duties that may may float, um, if I remember correctly, as we're going through this restructure. That and may what? M may some duties may may move. Oh, new, mm -hmm. such as um, English language mm -hmm. learning was that one, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, I couldn't recall if some of the the reading that she had mentioned. Her specialty is within reading and English language learning. Was that one of the duties that would have been floating to? It, it was. Yeah. So that, um, that certainly, so the, the special education director would not be responsible for Title III, which is the supervision of English language learners. And uh, yeah. Um, I agree that Pat comes across more analytical and Anita comes across as more holistic and um, I have a concern that Anita has, has only two years of experience as an administrator in New Hampshire at a K-8 school and so that she doesn't have the experience with 9 through 12 and what we learned in the first interview was only one out of district placement. So um, 
that's a concern. I think she came across great this interview and um, knows her stuff. I think I think Pat is you know obviously a safer choice for us in some respects. So this is going to be a long-term position help, correct? I mean this is our, our, our plan is that we've reorganized this function and uh, we're going to have a part-time special administration uh, special ad yeah. administrator going forward. This isn't some sort of temporary interim kind of appointment. True. And so Pat is retiring. Yes. So I don't I don't I mean there is the consideration that someone might stay longer than, than Pat. True. That's no, hard to know. I mean, it's quite different. I, I liked Anita a lot. Um, I like Pat a lot. Um, in some ways, Pat does have the edge because she's been here. She has more experience and she's more familiar with the school system. And has so. implemented some things that are in their early sort of progress state and right. would be helpful from a continuity standpoint to ensure PBIS and mm -hmm. RTI and other things are expanded and enhanced under the new model. So what would be the greatest risk of hiring Anita? She'd probably have some learning time to get up to speed. In the I, end, don't, I think she could do the job. I so I think, yeah, job. so absent that, they, I think they could both do the job, but sort of how they do the job. So she's got a learning curve, so she doesn't have the experience. She only has two years, only one out of school placement placement so less experience so what's the risk though at the end she would fail how what's the downside to her I think that Pat Pat has a better experience financially and with managing um, managing that that difficult and delicate balance of how do we serve the needs of our children as well as making sure that we are have a budget that is manageable and and um, carefully considered. So I guess one risk could be a financial risk. I don't know. What's the risk of choosing Pat? Well, under her retired yeah. role, how long can she work? As a it's it's not it, as long as she wants. It's a limit on number of hours and amount she's paid, and that is all that is um, dictated by the retirement system. So there's a cap on her salary. Salary and uh, number of hours per year. So, so we don't we aren't particularly sure of how the number of hours is going to really work out because it's new. I mean, it's, in it's, general, it's, the, it, if the teacher's retirement system is similar to the state retirement system, you can work 60 to 65 percent of your full-time equivalency. And we have this as less, right, less than 20 hours a week. We have it at 20. Is we, it a, we have it at 0.5 or less. So, oh, okay. so right. My yeah. point is, is that going to be enough hours once we actually... I mean, if you're looking at risks, is it going to be enough hours to get the job done? We don't know that. Given our fiscal year 17 budget and the fact that we just had town meeting cut it by another $75,000, I don't think we have the money to make it more than 0.5. So we better hope it works. And if we needed to invest yes. in the department, there are... Right? Yes, I'm not no. answering your I mean, question, yes, but we true, don't have any more money <laughs> to... Right. But we're at this new flexible scenario where we have a half-time administrator, we have a coordinator. If we were to augment the overall team, it may be other needs, maybe not necessarily the half-time administrator. So it gives us even more flexibility to do mm. that with whatever sure. pound dollars we have to invest in special mm -hmm. education. Um, mm -hmm. Just the, uh, I'm sorry, quick question about the out of districts placements uh, one versus how many here? Uh, we have about, let's say about eight or nine. Think about, you get a spreadsheet with non-identifying student information. Call up that spreadsheet in your head. Remember, it's only one page, it's just a few numbers, if even eight or nine. But we have very few. 
but the person, the administrator needs to know, like, the families, the placements, the dollar, like, the, the transportation to it, like, yeah, they help them select. When you oversee an out-of-district placement, it's, it's you. not only do you want to have familiarity with the existing out-of-district placement because you're responsible for progress monitoring, which can occur legally no less, no fewer than two times per year. One of those times is attending the meeting. You should probably be there more than that. Um, and in addition to that, you should be familiar with a range of out of, of placements because you need to work with the team to find the place that is the best fit for a child. So it's not only just knowing the placements of the students who currently <coughs> attend approved private placements, but it's also being familiar with a range of state of placements that meet certain disability types. So in the event that you need to do an out-of-district placement, you can provide options and work with the team to find the best option. It's not going to help you differentiate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a value of having Pat, the continuity. We have a new person come in. She'd be, even at halftime, a continuous person there. She's implemented things that she now would have, as she says, more ability to fully implement. The Nita seemed there was a, there was a different philosophy, a different approach, um, but it's unproven. She comes with nice references, but the range of experience, the financial, some of the logistical challenges, um, are more than what we find with Pat. But the risk with Pat is I'm trying to see, I'm trying to weigh pros and cons. Pat's known. Pat, she wouldn't bring that different philosophy. Is that the only big difference? I think Pat represents a de-risking of this situation more than risk. I mean, I'm right. above all. I'm person who's always crying out for new techniques and innovation. I love whole student, you know, philosophies. I really liked her. She's a delightful person. I, I like trying new things. But in this situation, again, where we have, you know, PBIS now going in its second year, right? And okay. RTI, the tiered invention now in its, its this first This is year one, year, so next year will be year two. And we're expanding across mm -hmm. more grades. Um, I, I feel like not that it's fragile per se, but we are investing in this new model that we believe. And, and like I feel, having gone through the principal search, I just have a, a lens into what faculty are te thinking about and investing their time into these mechanisms and the analytical methods that Pat and everyone seems really on board with. Just wouldn't want to disrupt that train that seems to be on a, on the right track. I. That's my personal view for me at this moment. That was helpful, thanks. That was nice, thank you. That was good. I, no, I, I see that. I, I mean, I see that in, in some ways to have Pat do, do the transition to the new structure. Uh -huh. Can be helpful. And it doesn't well, have to be for... That's right, it doesn't years. have to be forever. It's it can be through bridge. the transition, and right. then if she leaves, we could say, thank you for your help getting us through this transition. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, mean, I, I, have, I have talked to a few people who teach special ed, and they assure me that everyone is going to love having a coordinator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sounds, yeah. Sounds, yeah. Sounds I think it's a, good, uh, it's a good plan. It, it just does a lot of good things for direct instruction yeah. in the classroom. Mm -hmm. It really frees up mm -hmm. special education teachers to focus mm -hmm. on children. The part-time position will be answering to the new position? No. The coordinator is full full-time. The coordinator would answer to both special ed administrator, and I would assist the coordinator also, because the special administrator is part-time, so I would be more than happy to assist what? with... The special ed what? Coordinator. So this because the special ed administrator director is a part-time position and the coordinator is full-time. Oh, I thought you just said it the opposite way. And I was like, oh. and the principal plays a role in that dynamic as well? Overseeing plays a role in that dynamic, schools, dynamic, but does not... Um, not the, direct supervision. Not direct supervision. It's special education. Partner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. All right, people. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Can I make the comment? Please. I think you're 100% right. Both candidates are adequate in making the job. 
but Pat has a wealth of experience. She may not be around as long as Anita, but I believe she can implement your programs very quickly, and then if she leaves, you'll be all set, and if you hire someone else, I think your programs will go ahead nicely, but she's got a wealth of experience. You can't deny that. All right, I know how you feel. I think I know how you feel, Paul. Yeah, I think Mary, what you just said was the most best summary of the first. Thank you. Yeah. That's compelling. So we have consensus that we think Pat is our best choice right now. Yes. Right now, given the situation which we find ourselves. Yeah. Anita was great. Yeah. And I, I liked her. her energy. I liked her talk about holistic approaches. Do we need a vote? Yes. Did we just do a consensus? Yeah, roll call vote. Oh, roll call vote. Hmm. Okay. Firing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul, roll call vote. Your decision. What does that mean? Oh. Motion. Do you need do a we motion? Have, do we need a motion? So I, 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 I was taking it as, well, let's do a motion. motion. Let's do a motion. Uh, to offer the part-time special education administrator position to that bill. Second. Okay. Paul. Yes. Humera. Hi. Roby. Yes. Linda. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone.